Okay, here we go with another uh, biomolecule chapter, uh, chapter 17 here on lipids. Uh, so we'll talk about the different types of lipids and obviously uh, we'll discuss their importance in biological systems and uh, hopefully give you a nice thorough understanding of this interesting topic. So our first lecture here on lipids is just general background on lipids. It's a nice short lecture to get us started. Don't worry, there'll be plenty of additional information coming, but let's just make sure we understand what a lipid is and why it's important uh, both chemically and biochemically. Okay, so lipids are first and foremost biomolecules that contain fatty acids or a steroid nucleus. Again, not a nucleus like a cell nucleus, uh, meaning, again, just a basic um, structural unit. They're soluble in organic solvents, which is, again, chemically interesting for them, uh, but they're not soluble in water, which is important both chemically and biochemically. They're named from the Greek word lipos, which means fat, again, energy storage molecule, um, extracted from cells using nonpolar organic solvents, which is why these nonpolar organic solvents are not generally good for us, and many are known or suspected carcinogens because of how they can move through those lipid bilayers. And finally, they're natural components of cell membranes, fat-soluble vitamins, and steroid hormones. Um, so we'll take a look at all those different uh, aspects that lipids play central roles in throughout the entire Chapter 17 lectures. When we talk about lipids, we tend to classify them in two main types. So the first type of lipid would be those that contain the structural component of a fatty acid. So we see that really long chain, nice um, skeletal structure there. Hopefully you're comfortable with those by this point in the course. Uh, we see that polar head group, the carboxylic acid group, right? That gives it some um, water affinity at that end of the molecule. And then we see we've got a long tail there, uh, carbon hydrogen bonding there. So uh, that hydrocarbon end is uh, not very water loving. That's our hydrophobic end. And that's what would tend to interact with the organic solvents or uh, in the body with other long chain chain um, fatty acids. Uh, the other main type of lipid would have the structural component of a four-member steroid molecule. So we see that fused four-ring uh, system. And again, uh, that's cholesterol. It's also the basis of a lot of um, sex uh, hormones, things like um, testosterone, for instance, and uh, we'll talk more about those as we move on, but it's important when we discuss lipids in general that we realize there's two main types. There's the long chain fatty acids, and the triglycerides and things that those are based on, and then there's those uh, steroid type molecules that um, can be important uh, as lipids like cholesterol, but also important as hormones like testosterone and other hormones based on that four ring structure. So even within those two types, we have different types of um, lipids. If we talk about the ones that tend to have those long chain fatty acids, uh, we can have waxes, uh, we can have fats and oils, triglycerols, uh, we can have glycerol phospholipids, and we can have prostaglandins. So those are uh, four different types of substances that tend to contain those long chain fatty acid type lipids. Um, if we think about the other type uh, that don't contain the fatty acid chains, those would be our steroids. And again, the steroids tend to be either cholesterol or the steroid hormones. I'm sure some of you are like me and you're visual learners and you like to see this sort of um, classification scheme drawn out visually. So here we have the big idea lipids up at the top. Uh, we segregate lipids into the two types, the fatty acid type lipids or the steroid type lipids. And then the steroids, that's sort of it. We'll talk about the uh, cholesterol itself and then the hormones that come from it later on. Uh, but for the fatty acid type lipids, then we go into those different types where we have the waxes tend to be long chain alcohols connected to fatty acids, the triacylglycerols, uh, we have a glycerol molecule and then three fatty acid um, residues connected to it. Uh, the glycerol phospholipids have that same similar glycerol to fatty acids, but then uh, a uh, phosphate group and an amino alcohol. And finally, the sphingolipids, you have instead of glycerol, you have sphingosine now, uh, and then you have a fatty acid residue and that uh, phosphate amino alcohol group. So those are the um, different types of fatty acid type lipids. And um, then, of course, the steroid type lipid is, is uh, mainly based on that four ring. And then we can get into the either cholesterol or uh, hormone end of things. 
So we've just scratched the surface here on lipids, but before we leave this very general introductory lecture, let's uh, stop with the learning check. So in this learning check, you're asked which lipids contain the alcohol glycerol? So is it A, the steroids and waxes? Is it B, the triacylglycerols and glycerophospholipids? Is it C, the sphingolipids and glycerophospholipids? Or is it D, the glycerophospholipids and waxes? So hopefully uh, the correct answer sort of jumps out at you here, but stop the video if you need to, take a few moments to think it over, make your selection, and then start us back up when you're ready to check your work. Good luck. Okay, and hopefully B jumped out at you, right? Triisoglycerols and glycerophospholipids both have glycero in there, so uh, if only every question could be that easy, right? Uh, well, uh, again, the other um, structural uh, types we talked about here, the steroids are based on those four fused rings together, and then uh, waxes uh, and the sphingolipids don't involve glycerol, although they do involve fatty acids. So it's answer choice B, triisoglycerols and glycerophospholipids that contain the alcohol, the triol glycerol, right? One, two, three um, positions of carbons, each one has that uh, hydroxyl group. So we'll talk more about all of these substances in later chapter lectures. So uh, hopefully you've uh, enjoyed your introduction to chapter 17 and you're looking forward to those further discussions in the upcoming lectures.